virtual people. Welcome to episode 39 of ECR Redux. We take your favorite franchises out of the analog era and bring them back to 2022. I'm your host, pop culture punk Chris Stiles, joined as always by my co-host with the most, film professor Ian Kling. How you doing, everybody? And we have two radical guests on the show tonight. First up, Phantom Spotlight's own musical expert. She's a vocalist and member of the Vancouver Master Chorale, formerly the social media coordinator for Wizard World, and soon to be performing at Carnegie Hall. Jazz Bealby's on the show. Wow. Rock on. Excellent, y'all. Party on. <laughs> Party time. And rounding out this righteous crew, she's worked with Hunters Entertainment, Dark Galaxies Gaming, and has interviewed countless stars of stage and screen. She's also an award-winning cosplayer, prop maker, level 30 horror lover, and a VHS enthusiast. Ooh. Benny Mitchell's on the show. Hello there. Happy to be here. Hi. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on, you guys. We are here today for a reasonable amount of party time and a whole lot of excellence. That's right. It's Wayne's World time. But before we can swing. dish out some... <laughs> swing. Inappropriate but swings. <laughs> there will be many swings uh, and many Abraham Lincoln references. Um, but before we can dish out some drama for the dynamic duo, we need to talk about how Wayne's World came into our lives and what we love about it. We'll start with Jazz and Bendy, but that also goes for you guys watching at home. Hit us up in the live chat with your Wayne's World stories. So, Jazz, Bendy, whoever wants to go first. How did you discover Wayne's World? Was it through the sketches or did you see the movie first? Or we're talking VHS, cable, theaters, laser. How did it happen to you? So Wayne's World came out the year I was born. Wow. <laughs> I'm the baby. <laughs> and uh, it, it was really, it was a movie that both my, both my parents loved. And my parents didn't really agree on a lot of different things. Like there were certain fandoms they loved. It, it was like Star Wars and SNL and like nothing else. So I got to experience it at a very young age. All the jokes went over my head. And then like, as I got older, the more I watched it and I was like, this is the greatest movie of my childhood. And it's not for kids. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even imagine being born into a world where Wayne's World's already a thing. Like it was so, I was such an SNL addict already because early nineties SNL was so good. Mm -hmm. But um, Jazz, oh, yeah. how did you discover through the show or was it the movie first? I, I'm think so, I mean, I I wasn't a baby when it came out, but I was still very young and I, I obviously didn't see the theaters, but I, I believe I came through it through the VHS. Um, my family had it on the TV all the time. Maybe, maybe it was even HBO, you know, when, when it was on the cable for a while. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I just remember that iconic scene with them in the car doing Bohemian Rhapsody. And that's like my first memory of it. And I just been in love with that film since then. You know, that scene, I mean, that's kind of, I feel like that's almost like the money scene. That's the thing that everyone remembers from the movie. That's, I was going to say, that's like the most iconic scene that it, from it that is movie, a, I think. It is a really, obviously, incredibly iconic scene if we're still talking about it and decades I'll later. Show you all that, my shirt that we got here. Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. Love it. Well, then Press appropriate. 2019. So <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, man. I, I can't even imagine. Um, Ian, do you remember, did you discover through the show or did you watch the movie first or? No, so I, you know, I was definitely the HBO or like, you know, this, this, okay. this was on HBO, but I remember watching Wayne's World 2 mm. before watching Wayne's World. And I, I'll be. Oh, wow. And, and, Eddie and the Cruisers. I'm your so way sorry. In. That's right. <laughs> hey, I'm okay with it though. I like, I, I'll say it now. I like Wayne's World 2, but I you like do. like it better than one though. I do actually. I did a rewatch yesterday would, today and I enjoyed it more. Actually. I'm like jazz, actually. Yes. I actually like Wayne's World 2 more than the first one. But the I'm kind of on the fence about this and I've switched sides a couple of times over the years. So <laughs> maybe one of you maybe one of you, someone can sway me tonight. But, well, okay. But I'm sorry, well, continue, continue. Well, I would also say this. I, I really want to say that I actually got the VHS at McDonald's. There's a there's this Paramount thing oh, that God, i remember McDonald's, this yeah McDonald's adam's family and and yes. Wayne's world yep. yeah there you, you know if you got a five dollar meal you got you could get a vhs tape i remember that yeah. i i i i want to say that's how i saw the first one but two i saw on hbo i know that but i never saw the show i never i never saw it on snl or anything like that i didn't even know it was an snl connection until wow. you know years later you watch 
some you know you, you catch some things and you're like oh wayne's oh that's where it came from you know you, you kind of do that so oh, wow um so i i feel like my story is going to be a little bit different before i get into that i do want to touch on the chat real quick uh just see some names in there uh my buddy matt sharp uh devin zane angie saunders a couple of mashup geniuses in there gold's code with the party on chris um angie saunders there's a lot of excellent party time going on uh how do you get to oh wait a minute okay um i'm so sorry gold's code says how do you you get to Carnegie Hall. Oh, practice. Okay. <laughs> I prefer JT's me, world with the code. Beat me fan. to it. Beat me to it. I was gonna do that joke to Jazz. Dang. That is an interesting. Uh, he's already pitching. Uh, JT's world with the code man. It's interesting. It's it's tempting, but uh, we're here to talk about Wayne Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar. Um, I, I'm the I guess I'm the only one who discovered it through the show. Like I said, I was a complete SNL addict, and like the early '90s cast is that's the one i'm the most nostalgic for i even though i don't necessarily think it's the best cast but like i just have such great memories of being like five years old and it's saturday night and it's 10 30 and you start watching saturday night live and it goes till midnight and it just felt like the coolest way to kind of like wrap up the fun part of a weekend because sundays were always depressing you had homework you knew you were going back to school sure. blah 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 but like saturday night it was like you know you have the spirit of summer every time I mean, it's still uh, like that except now with work <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. well, yeah. Wait until you get that. to be my age. It's sleeping on Saturday. Yeah, I'll get to right? sleep. Internally, I am your age. <laughs> I've been working weekends for so long, I can't even enjoy them anymore. Aww. But um, so, yeah, poor me. Yeah, poor <laughs> me. Call me a, oh, call me a Chris, ambulance. So weird. <laughs> oh, you have to um, work weekends. So, I, have to wear, I have to wear crappy shirts. <laughs> so I would watch uh snl right every week and my parents would occasionally watch and one of the few sketches they for some reason thought was funny was wayne's world so when the wayne's world movie came out like my parents and like a couple other parents like a bunch of people in the neighborhood took their kids and you know it was amazing then you got you know got it as soon as it came out on vhs and just you know consumed it you mean um this? Oh, oh yes. man that's what i'm talking my about my parents yes. copy they got it october 4th 1992 nice They're <laughs> there, there is something so, so nostalgic about movie posters and VHS oh. covers in general, but that is definitely one that <laughs> makes me think of the early 90s and like a certain slice of early 90s that obviously it, it caters to. It caters to like the, the hard rock, the heavy metal, like dudes with long hair and just, you know, there's, you know, ripped jeans and band t-shirts and flannels. Like there's oh. such a... You know, oh, I'm making Ian have an out of body experience. Oh my now. God, what? I did, I just thought of this. I haven't thought about this in like 20 years. I had the cassette tape to Wayne's World. I had the soundtrack to the movie Wayne's World, oh. and I remember listening to Feed My Frankenstein on yes. that cassette tape. Oh my God, over, over and the over. First, oh, I forgot about that. The first album I ever got was the Wayne's World soundtrack. I like begged my dad to take me to Record City in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Yeah. And it was like, I need this. I don't care if it's cassette tape or I was going to ask, disc, was it a cassette you know. tape or was it like an actual vinyl? Mine was a cassette because we listened to it in the car. Mine I remember was, it was a cassette, cassette too. You had to do it in the like, car. I don't care Absolutely. what it is. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. Oh, that just God. You just reminded me of that all of a sudden. I completely forgot about it. And then I'm like, oh my God, I, I listened to that over and over again and ballroom blitz by tia cara am i saying that right tia Carrera, yeah tia Carrera, yeah. Tia Carrera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah she's amazing yeah. in the movie i mean talk about probably in uh, one of the definitely of the 90s one of the greatest star making roles ever right Absolutely. i mean Correct. you know overnight success is always 10 years in the making um, so I'm sure she was in a lot of, you know, smaller things that I didn't see prior to Wayne's World. I know she was in, um, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, the finest yeah. film ever made starring <laughs> Don Johnson and Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, yeah, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say like for yeah. 1992, like for them to introduce, like as the character Cassandra, like an Asian punk rock, like yeah. badass, yeah. that was huge. And then of course yeah. she's gorgeous. I mean, mm -hmm. I should have known then. Uh, about certain things about myself but yeah 
And as much as I credit like Sarah Connor and Ellen Ripley, Ellen Ripley for making me love badass women, like, I gotta yeah. give a lot of credit to Tia Carrera in Wayne's World. Like mm -hmm. when she gets off stage and like gets like in the middle of that bar fight and kicks fucking ass, you're like, shit, I love her. Like you're here in Dreamweaver. Um, I mean, so Dreamweaver. many things. Uh, 